ready to worship? Who's ready to seek the face of the Lord? Because you know, when we see Him, we're changed from glory to glory. When we set our face to seek the Lord and allow Him to sit, search us as we set our face on Him, He's able to do things in a moment that we've been working on for years. And today we are stepping into the month of Adar. It's actually this year Adar 1 because we have 1 and 2. Um, it's a leap year on the Hebraic calendar. And so that's where we're going to go today. So I want to just set your heart that you would be in a place of seeking the Lord with your whole heart so that everything that holds you in bondage know that this is a time where we break through into freedom. Who's ready for a new level of freedom? So Father, today, we just set our face to seek you. We set our heart to bow before you. We set our hope and our expectation on you and you alone. That you in all your magnificence, in all your glory, the God who is and was and is to come, the God in whom there is no other one like you. We set our face like flint to seek you. We set our heart to receive from you. And God, I pray over us today that in everything that we do, you and you alone, would receive all the praise, the glory, the power, the magnificence of praise that you are due. And we set our face to seek you, to know you, that we may then make you known in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's worship the Lord together as one to see his glory revealed. You know, one of the ways the Lord receives blessing and glory and honor forever is as his power and his might is manifested in us to us and through us and I just feel the atmosphere is pregnant with the Lord wanting to do something among us wanting to minister to us this morning I heard the phrase, for this reason I came. Yes. And I keep hearing that over and over again during worship. For this reason I came. He came to defeat and utterly destroy the works of darkness. He came to destroy the demonic powers and principalities. He came to destroy those things that come against us that press us in on every front he came to destroy sickness in the body in the soul and in the mind he came for this reason so as we continue to worship I'm going to ask our children who have been healed have been trained in healing room kids just to come stand up here and is I don't want you to break out of your worship. I want you to worship and to praise him with a knowing that you're creating an atmosphere so that what he came for and what he comes for for this reason he came. What is it that you need him to come to you? Because he came, but he comes. So, Father, as we continue to worship and as our children come, Lord, I'm asking that faith would arise in the room. Because you are the Almighty. You are the one who is above every other name. You are the one who, for this very reason, you came that we would be saved, that we would be delivered, that we would be healed to the 
uttermost, not partially, but all the way. So, Father, unlock for this reason in our midst that you might receive even greater praise out of us. You're worthy of it, God, but sometimes our hearts need a fresh encounter so that what you are deserving of, we have the capacity to release to you. So, Father, unto you who are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask, think, or imagine, let it be done here. Let it be done now for your glory and your honor in Jesus' name. If you need the Lord to touch you, just come up, and our kids who are full of faith will lay hands on you and pray for you. For the past Deep 10 minutes, I have been smelling fire. Now, this is the third Sunday this has happened, but this time it is like we are, I, I just, I'm just like smoke. There's smoke on the altar. And there is, there's no, there's no fire without a sacrifice. And if you want to sow in right now into he is receiving our worship yes. the fire is ascending before his throne before his throne and unto the lamb as we just sang before his throne and unto the lamb it is before his throne and unto the lamb so if you want to sow in to the fire sow your sacrifice into the fire Just kind of feel your way through the glory. Thank you, team, so very much. Um, wow. I really want you to, to take what Bradley just said. It just, regardless of what I'm saying up here and what I'm bringing forth, stay in that realm. Um, because in the glory, the Lord can do far more than we could ever imagine. Far more. Um, and we do need to learn how to just be still and just rest in his glory. We live in such a busy culture and our brains get to going and they're so busy that it's sometimes hard for us just to stop. So this has been really, really good. Uh, just briefly give a few announcements. March for Life is on February 22nd downtown Atlanta. Don't forget we've got Dr. Alamu Beef 2 coming in the weekend of March 8 through 10. 
Uh, we will be here Friday night and Saturday, about half a day, and then he will be with us on Sunday morning. And then two new announcements. On March the 24th, Kevin and Rose Sambrook will be in. They are flying in the night before, so they will be with us that day, and I'm really excited. They always come with a fresh word um, that's for this house, and I know they will this time as well. And then the big announcement. We have Chuck Pierce coming back. May 31st and June 1st, um, he will be here on Friday night and a Saturday morning, so mark your calendars, plan your vacations accordingly, <laughs> and plan to be here. Uh, we will do Advancing Faith again this Tuesday night and Revival Prayer on Wednesday, and don't forget the daily prayer calls. Um, <clears throat> this past Tuesday night, God just moved in on us and in some deep ministry. So if you haven't been a part of our Tuesday nights and you're able to do so, the Holy Spirit that is hovering over us on Sunday mornings is coming and hovering over us on Tuesday night as well and taking it into some real practical, personal places of ministry. So I encourage you to be a part of that. And it's interesting how... All of the, the song selections, the, the way Holy Spirit moved, the way we moved with him today fits with where we are on the Hebraic calendar. We're at the beginning of the Hebraic month of Adar. And I titled today's message, A Time to Break Free. Hallelujah. I mean, who doesn't need to be at break free? It's time. And I want you to consider this verse, Ephaniah 3, 17. The Lord your God is in your midst. Is he not? A victorious warrior, he will exult over you with joy. Now, I want to just drop in right there for that word joy. It actually means to spin around. The Lord your God spins around you with joy. Isn't that awesome? He will be quiet in his love. He will rejoice over you with shouts of? Do you know most of us have this mentality that God is sitting on his throne watching to see if we mess up. Like he's got this stern face and he's so pure and holy that he can't handle us if we mess up. And he is pure and holy, but because he is, he can handle it when we mess up. Isn't that a victory? And the whole time, it is his joy that he releases over us. Do you not rather approach somebody that's in joy than somebody that is a scowl face? I mean, come on. God wants us to know he so loves us that he rejoices over us like we do when our grandchild walks in the room. There's nothing that matches to that. But that's how he is with us. He exults over us with joy and even releases shouts of joy over us. The month of Adar is connected to the tribe. All of the months are connected to different Hebrew. Israeli tribes, Israelite tribes, and this one is Nephtali, and it is the tribe associated with Adar. Get my tongue right here. And Nephtali was one of the three tribes that formed the rear guard. Look at this. God's glory. So what did we just step into? How many of you went through a rough week? I told somebody I felt like I was on a skateboard going through a maze all week. Never knew where it was going to turn. But see, the glory of God is our rear guard. In the midst of whatever you're going through, wherever you're moving, whatever obstacles, whatever warfare, He is your rear guard and it is His glory. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. And see, his glory protects the army. Because do you not know we are advancing? And the enemy just isn't in front of us. He loves to come around behind us. 
But aren't we grateful that the glory of God is our rear guard so the enemy has no entrance? Remember that. When you get in the midst of a battle, remember that the Lord your God is your rear guard. And this is a month that we celebrate the glory of God. He protects the nation, the army, and the camp from any attacks that would be coming up from behind. See, we need to be decreeing that over ourselves. Lord, be a rear guard over my life. Be a rear guard over my family. Be a rear guard. I decree that the Lord God Almighty is a rear guard around City Gate Atlanta and all of our shareholders. The Lord is a rear guard over our city. The Lord is a rear guard over our nation. The Lord is a rear guard of glory over our military all over the world. To protect them wherever they are. Neftali means my wrestling, and it comes from two words that can mean my bending and sweetness is to me. In other words, my bending is sweetness to me. When we bow our knee before the Lord, there is a joy and a sweetness that comes to our soul that you cannot enter into any other way. See, when we stand in the, our own strength, in our own power, in our own ability, and I'm going to be resolved and I am not going to budge, we are responsible for our own joy. How does that work? I don't know about you, but that doesn't work real well for me. But on a bended knee with a surrendered heart... There is a strength and a joy that comes that's unshakable. See, joy comes to us when we bend our will to the will of the Lord. This is a time and a season when we need to take a look and, and say, Holy Spirit, search me and try me. Is there anything of my own will that is resisting you? Have I determined I want what I want no matter what you say because I've determined I know? See, that's self-will, but the deal is that slips into us so easily and we can be so easily deceived that we think what we want is what God wants because we have so rehearsed it and, okay, I'm on a medal. We even take some prophetic words that have come to us in the past season and we've interpreted them according to our own will, our own desires, our own heart yearnings. And so then we stand in those words and go, well, that was the word of the Lord. And God said, I moved. Because not every word is a forever word. And not every word is going to manifest in the season in which you receive it. In fact, God sometimes gives you a word and then he says, lay it down, let it die, and I'll resurrect it in my time. Now, most of us don't like to hear that. And around 1996, I had had a word and the Lord, I was on a way into a planning meeting with other leaders in the city. And the Lord said, I've issued a sentence of death over that. And it was something I loved. And I said, well, what does that mean? And he said, I've said, I put a sentence of death on it. It's, you can keep it running on life support if you want to, but it will be out of the arm of your flesh, and you'll have to work it. Now, there is a work we do with the Lord, and it can still be hard work, and then there's a work that we can do out of the arm of our own determination. I walked into the meeting and I said, y'all can keep it going if you want to, but I've heard heaven and I'm backing off. There were people that weren't happy with me. But what the Lord promised me in that is in due season, I will resurrect it my way and you won't have to work it the same way. When I did a map of where all of our shareholders are located around the city, do you know what? He's doing it because the assignment was circle the city with prayer. We circle this city. We circle this city. And I know you are a praying people. 
And plus, on top of that, that's just here. But I also now know multitudes of prayer groups that are significant, that are really moving with the city of God, with the, with the Lord around our city, praying for this city to be filled with the glory of God. So in his way, he's resurrecting it. But what would have happened if I had held on to it in 1996? It would have been a work of the flesh, and it would eventually have died anyway. But in being obedient, the seed went into the ground, and now God's resurrecting it. So we have to learn to build, bend our knee, bend our will to his will. Another meaning of Adar is strength. How many of you need strength? This is a month to tap into the strength of the Lord. Not your own strength, but his strength. Because it's his strength that will break the chains that bind you. It's his strength that will break through the walls of resistance that you're facing. It is his strength that will enable you to stand and having done all to stand. Because we're in a time and a season in many of our lives and in a nation and even in the world, we have got to have a resolve that's born not of the flesh but of the spirit that we have a strength and a resolve that comes out of the spirit of God that we are not going to stop. We can't stop. We cannot stop. We have to learn how to tap in to the well of God's strength. Reach down deep into the well of God's strength so that you can pull up out of that well of his grace because the reality is we're weak. Now, we don't like claiming that, but the reality is we are. Apart from God, we're all weak. The sooner we acknowledge our weakness the sooner we tap into his grace that brings us strength. But this is a month for the strength of the Lord to come forth. And then this is kind of a fun one. The letter kuf, K-U-F in the Hebrew, means monkey. And monkey is the symbol of laughter. So all this month, what I want you to do is I want you to think of the antics of the monkeys. Now, this means a whole lot to Trey and his family as his uncle has a pet monkey. So maybe Trey can post some pictures of the monkey this week. <laughs> Just to keep us lighthearted. You see, when battles are going around and life gets hard and we go through a week feeling like we're skate- on a skateboard going through a maze, we can forget to laugh. Anybody else forget to laugh? Think of the monkey. And let's begin to laugh. And remember this, laughter is the joy that results from witnessing light come out from darkness. Or even better yet, laughter is what happens when we step out of darkness and into light. When you come out of the darkness of soul and burst forth by God's strength, into the light of his glory and grace. When suddenly, when things are are dark and, and you're having to wrestle through some things and you suddenly see the light of God bringing revelation on what you need to do, all of a sudden it's like, yeah, I can do this. God's wanting us to break forth in laughter. And don't forget that in Psalm 2, The word of God says that God sits in heaven and he laughs. He's laughing over his enemies. See, we look out at all the enemies that are raging in the world and sometimes we go into the woe is me and how can I do this and I'm not going to make it and what about this and what about that and and we go into 50 zillion directions of the what ifs. Can you just simply say, God, I want to remember you're seated on your throne and you're not moving. 
You've never lost your seat. Never lost his seat. When things are good, he's on the throne. When things are bad, he's on the throne. And you know, a lot of times the bad things we're walking through is so that we recognize that he's on his throne. And so that we come into a greater measure of of deliverance, a greater measure of surrender, a greater measure of faith that is unshakable. See, I believe we're going through some things right now because God's saying, you've got more faith in you than you know, but you're not tapping into it. You're allowing the fears and the consternations of everything going on around you. You're focusing on that rather than focusing on me. And I'm seated on my throne. I reign eternal. And I never, 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 never get moved off my throne. There's nobody else like me. What if we really got that? What if we really laid hold of the reality that our God is the only one true and living God. Every other little G God, every other little thing that goes on to try to grab our attention is nothing but a poof of hot air. (sighs) Nothing. Absolutely nothing. But here's something else that cuff represents it symbolizes a masquerade it's interesting that during the month of adar this time it will be in adar too it's the season of purim and masks are a part of the celebration of purim but folks it is time to remove the mask We all tend to have a mask we put on at times. And we want to put on a happy face. (laughs) We want to make sure everybody thinks we're okay when we're not. We even sometimes try to put on a mask with God. We want to put on a mask and present we're all full of faith and And the whole time we're crushing and falling apart on the inside. And we act like God doesn't know. I mean, how ridiculous is that? But we do it. And then the enemy puts masks on us. Identities on us. People put masks on us. But the deal is you don't have to take them. People try to put masks on us all the time. The enemy's constantly trying to say, you're this, you're that, you're bump, bump, bump. Anybody have any masks that get put on you? Like, no, that is not who I am. Just take your mask. You go wear it. I'm not wearing it. Get weighted down with those masks. I'm not going to get weighted down with those masks because it's not who I am. I will not be. So ask the Lord this month to show you where the masks are. What mask have you come into an agreement with? What identities? Because all a mask is is an identity. It's a, it's a counterfeit. It's a covering identity. And a lot of masks are rooted in shame. Some masks are rooted in fear. Some masks are rooted in a bravado. Of, I'm going to just show you. But you know, even the bravado mask is usually rooted in shame. Because it's covering what you don't want other people to know. So we have to invite the Lord, show me. Show me where I'm not being a true person of who you created me me to be. Remove the mask. And one of the other aspects of Adar, and we'll cover this off and on in the next few minutes, is joy. So I inserted Nehemiah 8.10 right here because I wanted us to refocus on joy. Then he said to them, go eat of the fat, drink of the sweet, and send portion to him who has nothing prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. Do not be grieved. You know, sometimes we have to speak to our soul and say, stop it. Just stop it. Do not be grieved for the joy of 
of the Lord is your strength. I mean, folks, we all go through times when we're either maybe just physically worn out. And we have to speak to our soul and say, rise up. When we're discouraged, rise up. Rise up, speak to it. Do you know you have authority over your soul? If you start rehearsing the curse of whatever is going on in your soul, do you know what you'll end up looking like? What's your cursing? What if we began decreeing what God says over us and what God says over our nation rather than rehearsing the hurts, the pains, the disappointments, and the curses? What if we did that personally? But what if we did that over our nation? What if you did that over your workplace? Change the atmosphere. Shift it. Don't be grieved. Don't wring your hands. Stand up and say, God, give me your strength. I need your strength to face today. I need your joy, for your joy brings me strength. So some of the characteristics of Adar, and I've touched on some of these, but I just want to go through them quickly. So that as you walk through this month, you are processing with the Lord over these characteristics of this month. The first one is identity. This is a time for your true identity to be reflected. Now, the only way for our true identity to be reflected is to come out of the false identities and move into the true. And where I am challenging us to focus in on is not the identity that is rooted in what you do, but in who you are in Christ. Because a lot of times we find our identity in what we do. I mean, how often do we meet somebody and what do you do? Rather than finding out who we are as who we are. We are so trapped in the what we do equals who we are. And it needs to be broken off. Because what you do can change from season to season. And the deal is we have to break out of it. And then we have to help other people break out of it about us. For probably 20 years, one of my primary roles, things I did, was a prayer leader. Now, I still lead prayer. And I can remember the Lord told me in 2002, you'll always lead, you will always lead prayer, but you won't always be a prayer leader. Isn't that an interesting line? But my identity, people in different circles, oh, she's the prayer lady. It's not a bad title, (laughs) but it's not who I am. Primarily, above all, in all, and even when I'm the prayer lady, I'm a daughter of the king. Period. Because you can get stuck in what you do and miss the who you are and if you ever miss the who you are what you do becomes weak a counterfeit even if you're even if you're doing it it can become a counterfeit because you're doing it out of the identity of the role rather than your identity as a son or daughter of Most High God. You've got to be careful where you find your identity. So this month, begin to decree over yourself who you are. Who you are. In the knowing of who you are, great confidence arises to be who you are, and then to do according to what he calls you to do. Because all doing flows out of being. We've been trying to be out of doing, and God's saying, no, get it straight. Be, and out of your being, do. So rehearse who you are. Go through the scriptures. Highlight them. Make you a list. Which which identities that God has said is over us 
are the ones he's highlighting for you. Because whatever he's highlighting for you is the place where he wants to bring you into breakthrough. You're the beloved. You're the head, not the tail. You are the apple of his eye. You've been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You are a son of the most high God. You are an heir and joint heir with Christ Jesus, your Lord. You're a daughter of the king. You're a son of the king. You are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You are his delight and his joy. What if you rehearse that every day? What do you think that would do to all those negative thoughts? All those counterfeit identities. It'll wash them away. The next characteristic of Adar is provision. And I want to insert this in here. Provision often impacts our identity. If we're focused on what we do as our identity, our provision will give us a you're worth it or you're not. Come on. We measure our identity by the provision we have. Your identity is in not what you have. It's not in what you do, but it's also in not what you have. Because whether you have or whether you have not, we always abound in the grace of the Lord. Always. Paul said, I've learned to be abased and I've learned to abound. It doesn't change him. He just was because he knew who he was. He knew he was a servant of the Most High God, called to be an apostle of God. He didn't care about the title. He knew he was a bond servant of the Most High God. And so the provision didn't matter because he was secure in who he was. So as we look at provision this month, do not allow worry over provision to steal your joy. That is one that is so easy for us to fall into. I loved Winston's testimony at the offering time last week. He's looking at it, given. He's like, I I don't know how this is going to work. And then it was there. But he chose to not worry over it. He chose to walk in faith. He chose, even in the walking in faith, to do it with joy. See, we've got to learn how to not let our worry over provision steal our joy. When you begin to see that happening, go back to God and say, You are Jehovah Jireh, my provider. You are my source. My job isn't my source. My paycheck isn't my source. You know, God was able to put a coin in a fish's mouth to meet the provision. If need be, he can put a a coin in a fish's mouth. He could bring quail and drop them into our yard if we don't have food. I love, Clay Nash says that all the time. What if there's no food? He says, I just believe God's going to bring a bring the quail to my yard or in his case the turkey and he'll take out his gun and shoot the turkey or the deer or the whatever else but God has a way of bringing us the provision and I wonder this is just a a Jackie pondering I wonder do we sometimes cut off the provision by our worry Do we put a padlock on the gate that provision would come through? Because we're afraid to walk through the gate. We're afraid to take the risk. We're afraid to be vulnerable. We worry over it. Well, what if, what if, what if? If we could strike the what ifs out of our vocabulary, we'd probably all be healthier on many, many levels. So break out of worry over your provision. And ask God to show you the pathway into the provision that is needed for you to fulfill being who he called you to be. Because who he's called you to be what and what he's called you to do, when you have a vision for that, the provision gets unlocked. But when you can block that by worry. 
and by fear and doubt and unbelief. But this is a month that there is a grace to break through into greater provision. The next characteristic we'll look at is it's a month for strategies of war. This is a time for you to develop war strategies to overcome fear and guard against idolatry. Guard, overcome fear and guard against idolatry. The guard against fear. Fear of what's coming next. You have to develop a strategy to war against what is on your pathway to take you into fear. See, God has us on a pathway to victory. He has us on a pathway of manifesting his kingdom in ways we've never seen before. But we have to break out of the fear. We have to break out of those things that hold us captive, that keep us from taking a risk. Walking with Christ, some people think it's boring. That's because they're not willing to take the risk of obedience. Because once you say yes, there is zero boredom at all. It also is a way that we need to develop war strategies against idolatry. What has your primary focus? That's idolatry. See, when you're in other nations, you can see their idols. And actually, in this one, we're seeing them more blatantly than we used to. My first trip to Japan, the idols were on every corner. I mean, blatantly right there. And it was a little harder back then for us to talk about idolatry here because we didn't see the idols. Well, well, we see them. But the reality is those manifested idols on the corner are just a reflection of what's in the heart. So we need to ask the Lord, what is taking a preeminence over you? What's gathering more of my attention than you are? What clouds my view? What am I bowing my knee to because that's most important? Those are idols. So develop a strategy of war this month that you will overcome idolatry and fear in your life. This is also a month in the war strategies mindset for you to war through to a deeper level of leadership in your life. Now, you may be sitting there and going, well, I'm not in leadership. Well, you are over your own life. And you will never lead anybody else if you can't lead you. Some people just kind of float through life with, okay, Sarah, Sarah, whatever will be, will be. That's not leadership, folks. You have to lead your life by taking dominion over your own soul, over your mind, your will, and your emotions. You have to learn how to lead by faith, not in reaction by fear. So it's time for us to have a new level of Holy Spirit leadership awakened in us. Have a new level of leadership awakened for you on your job, in your community. How would God have you demonstrate the leadership of the Spirit of God that's on the inside of you in your family? Not See, sometimes we get all messed up with leadership because we think of carnal leadership that is top-down, heavy hand. But see, the leadership of the Spirit is lift up. It's helping to strengthen and bring into a new life. That doesn't always mean it's soft. Kingdom leadership can be tough. Because you love people enough to say, come on, we've got to shift out of that pattern and into the godly pattern. Because you can either let people keep going. Like families, you can just let your kids keep going, right? And they fall off a cliff. We don't want to do that. We've got to have enough strength of the leadership of the Holy Spirit and the leadership of Christ in us to lead in a way that brings people into the knowledge of Christ and into his fullness. And that takes the next characteristic, which is faith. 
See, we've got to have a, another level of faith rise up and manifest in us. It's time for the decrees and curses set against you to be broken. Anybody else have decrees and curses that you battle with in your head? That are trying to convince you you can't, you shouldn't, you weren't made for this, you won't make it, you won't survive? If you're not now, you probably have. But this is a time for you to come up and break the power of those decrees and curses. Do not allow yourself, by the faith of God on the inside of you, to come into an agreement with those things any longer. Break out of them. When those words come to you saying, no, that's a lie. That's not who I am. It's not what I'm doing. It's not the destiny of my life. I break it off now in the name of Jesus. Let faith arise and let your enemies be scattered. It's also a month for faith to arise to break the roots of depression and despair. Our nation and many people in our nation, you feel the weight of depression and despair. You can feel it. There is a, there's a weightiness. You see it on the countenance of people when you're out. You see it in their eyes. Even over children, there's a, over, not all, but over many children, there's a, a sadness and a darkness in their eyes, and it's in the atmosphere. But folks, for us, filled with the Spirit of God, it's time to break through. Do not allow that despair and depression to take you. If you need some counseling help, get it. There's no shame in that. Because the reality is we all need somebody to help us sometimes. Pride is to stay back here and go, I can do this myself. Sounds like a two-year-old. I can do it myself. <laughs> no, you can't. Sometimes, yes. But a lot of times, we need somebody to come alongside, add their strength to us when we're weak, so that we can come up over it and break through the walls of resistance that have been formed by curses, by words that have been spoken against us, by the despair and the depression that we feel either from our own life or even in the atmosphere. That's why we're in a body. That's why it says in the word of God that we're members one with another. And that why we rejoice when one rejoices and we weep when another weeps. And it's not that we get in the pit with them. We weep with them in compassion and empathy. But we give our strength so that they rise up. And when they can't rise up, we just pick them up and carry them for a while. And that's okay. I love the story in the Gospels of the friends who took their paralytic friend and lowered him through the roof into the midst of where Jesus was so that he would be healed. The friend had no strength at all. But because his friends loved him enough and took him to Jesus, he got healed. See, there's no shame in that. That's a victory. That is such a victory. It's time to break through because when we break through those walls of depression and despair, those decrees and curses that have been set against us many times from our birth or even our conception, when we come to a breakthrough over those things, there is a new dimension of faith that rises that no devil in hell can stand against you. And you become the warriors to set other people free. It's time for faith to arise. Break down the walls of resistance. And when faith rises, there's an eruption of joy. This is a month for joy 
and a time to get into celebration mode of ending certain seasons of your life. Does anybody have a season you want to end? Have you been in a season that needs to end? Come on. Celebration will bring you to the end of the last and bring you into the new. It's time for celebration. It's time for the shout of praise to be among us. It's time for us to tap into the wellspring of life and faith and release a shout of celebration to our King. Come on. See, when we come into the joy, it brings a breakthrough to all the barriers that are in front of us. God's wanting a people that will be so convinced of who he is. Who he is seated above all of the earth and who he is seated on the throne of your heart. Who he is in the midst of our assembly that we lift up a shout of praise and we go from victory to victory to victory to victory. You see, what the world is looking for is they don't want to hear our message until they see the fruit of our lives. They want to see that we are living in victory. They want to see that we're living in joy. They want to watch us. And when they know we've got all kinds of stuff going around and we keep the joy... That is a testimony that is undeniable. So as we stand today, I want us just to say, you know what? I'm going for it. I'm going to go for it. So Father, today, I loose over your people and I decree over them a breakthrough into true identity. The identity that you have given to each and every one, breaking out to break in, to break through, that they take on the identity that you have spoken from the very beginning of time, that they will no longer be identified by the identities of yesterday, but they'll enter into the identity that was set in heaven before they were ever formed in their mother's womb. And I decree over your people that as they step into their identity, there is an unlocking of provision. There is an unlocking of vision that unlocks provision. Father, I say in the name of Jesus, let the eyes of our understanding be open to see the vision that you have in front of us. Not the vision of yesterday, not somebody else's vision, but God, the vision you have for us that as we see and embrace the vision that you have for us, the key to unlock the provision is loosed and out of that key, the strategies of war come into our hands to overcome every Every demonic assignment over our lives, every war strategy that has been set by the darkness, we have a higher level war strategy because we have the word of the Lord and we say the word of the Lord will be our rear guard as the glory of the Lord is released over us and I decree over your people a fresh anointing of leadership grace by the Spirit of God is right rising up in your people to be able to lead through the fray, lead through the confusion, lead through the oppression, lead through the obstacles, lead through until you come into the breaking in of the light of God and faith rises in a new dimension that gives way to the joy of the Lord that is their strength. Father, I say joy erupts this month in us with great shouts of joy and great release of laughter that God we join you we join you seated in heavenly places to laugh over our enemies we say the victory is in the joy 
The victory is in the laughter. The victory is in the name of the Lord God Almighty, Yeshua HaMashiach. Lift up a shout and lift up your joy in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Love on somebody, greet somebody you don't know. We're glad you're here and we will see you Tuesday night.